Hi, I'm Mark, and this is My Electric Life. Hi, if you're about to build or renovate a home in Australia, and you're not planning to cover the roof with solar panels, then you really are crazy. Also, if you're planning to buy a new car in the next year or two, and you're not seriously considering an EV, not just any EV, EV but an EV with a particular feature that I'll mention more about in a moment, then you are likewise nuts. I'm going to just briefly explain what I mean by this, but before I do, I just want to put my qualifications on the table because I'm not just your average dumbass YouTuber. I actually hold accreditation with the Clean Energy Council as a solar designer, and I've been working in that industry for a number of years now, so I actually know what I'm talking about in this area. So, solar. At the moment, there's about 20 to 25% of rooftops in Australia that actually have solar panels which puts us at the top position in the world for solar uptake. And that's quite impressive. However, it still means that there's 80% of households that don't have solar. And you have to ask the question, why not when solar panels are just so cheap now and the payback on them is remarkably short. So when we talk about a solar PV system, they're usually sized in terms of kilowatts. And if you put one kilowatt of solar panels on your roof, you know, on an average home, on an average day across Australia, that will generate about four kilowatt hours of energy. So if you were to completely cover your roof, and let's imagine you could fit 10 kilowatts on the rooftop, then you could expect to generate on average 40 kilowatt hours of energy. Now 40 kilowatt hours of energy is enough to power 90% of households in Australia. The problem is that you only need half of that energy in the daytime and you need half at night. And unfortunately, your solar PV system only generates in the day. So to solve that problem, people sometimes will pay to install battery storage in their house. And that is a solution, however, it's rather expensive. And whereas the payback on your solar panels may be two years, the payback on a battery is more likely to be 12 years or even longer. So that brings me to my second point. If you're looking at buying a car, you should definitely look at EVs. And the EV that you buy needs to have a feature called bi-directional charging. Now, Bidirectional charging is, is simply the ability of the car to not just take energy from the grid, so you plug it into the wall and it puts energy into the batteries, which it pulls out of the grid. With bidirectional charging, it can also export energy out of the car battery and back into your house to power all of your appliances at night. And if there's an excess, that can be exported into the grid and take advantage of pretty high uh, export tariff pricing that's available in the peak hours in the early evening. So now you have a feature that can actually turn the car into a battery on wheels that will make you money uh, and over time pay for itself. Now I can hear people right now shouting at the computer saying, oh yeah, but you know, EVs are so expensive, I can't afford an EV. Well, think again. I have a friend who just took delivery of an MG4 EV and he paid $32,000 on the road. So that makes it cheaper than a Toyota Corolla. And the difference between that car and the Toyota Corolla is that his car will save him approximately $3,000 every year in avoided energy costs. Whereas the Corolla will just sit in the garage and depreciate. So if he keeps that car for 10 years, it will have paid itself off completely. The Corolla, on the other hand, would have depreciated to being zero value. So this really is a no-brainer. Now, 
it's not been available to people until very recently to do this. But an important piece of news broke in the media last week. It was announced by the uh, Minister for Energy and Environment, Chris Bowen, at the Sydney EV show. And what he announced is that the Australian standard AS4777, which incidentally is a standard that controls the connection of solar inverters to the grid, that is, back, is currently being revised and the revised version is due for release next month, December 2024. The upshot of those changes are that the standard is being expanded to cover not just installed battery storage in a house, but also batteries in cars. So you'll be able to use that battery in the car just as you would a battery that's mounted on your wall. However, it has more utility because not only can it power your home and sell energy to the grid, but it also is a means of transportation. Now let's face it, you need to buy a car anyway, right? So $32,000 you would have spent on a car, but now you've got a car plus an energy, energy storage system. And to give you an idea of how effective that energy story, storage system is, uh, a typical car, a typical EV will have a battery size somewhere between 50 and maybe 80 kilowatt hours of storage. A typical home battery that you install on the wall, like say for instance a Tesla Powerwall, only stores 13 kilowatts. So if you look, take my car, which is a, a long range Tesla Model 3, it has six, the equivalent of six Powerwall batteries in it. And I only use maybe 10% of my battery every day. So that means there's 90% of it that's available to power my home and to sell back into the grid. Now you may be asking, well, wouldn't that be, um, you know, degrade the battery or void the warranty maybe on the car battery? Uh, well, no, it doesn't because the calculations for warranty on, on car batteries is based on an assumption that the battery will be fully charged and dis discharged each day. And most people don't do that. Most people only drive, in Australia, the average person only drives 30 kilometers a day. So, um, you know, a car with a 400 kilometer range, they're only using, you know, 10% or less than 10% of the, the battery. So, you know, there's all of that available energy there that could be used to power the home or sell into the grid. And it's not going to affect your warranty. It's not going to degrade the battery. It's just going to make the payback on the car uh, and the solar PV system irresistible. So that's it in a nutshell. I just want to share that with you because I don't think this is well understood. And uh, there are people out there that are, you know, building new homes and not even thinking about solar. And that is just crazy. I mean, you spend all this time thinking about what sort of bench tops you're going to have and what type of hardwood flooring you might have and all these fancy fixtures and fittings. And those things cost, you know, thousands, ten thousands of dollars. Uh, and for, you know, uh, uh, probably $10,000, you can put cover your roof with solar panels and never have to pay an energy bill again in your whole life. So, so something to think about. Anyhow, that's it for today. And uh, if you have any comments on this, please put them in the comment section. I'd be glad to hear your thoughts. And uh, if you have any questions, as I say, I'm a qualified uh, solar PV designer, so I can probably answer any technical questions you might have. But I guess the main thing is get out there and have a look, do a bit of research, talk to a local solar installer in your area, get a quote, get a couple of quotes, go and see your local MG uh, dealership, talk to them about uh, an MG, or if you want uh, something a bit flashier than that, uh, you know, you could get a Hyundai or even a Tesla, really up to you. But the main thing to do is to make sure that the car that you do buy, the model, do, is, does support bi-directional charging. So obviously there's an Australian standard and the car needs to be compliant with that standard. So it may take a little while for the car manufacturers to get that uh, compliance approval. Uh, I would expect that will probably take maybe six to 12 months. So sometime next year, you should be able to walk into a dealership and confidently know that you're buying a car that is supporting bi-directional charging. That's it for today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and take care.